بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد و نصلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا بنی اسرائیل اذکرو نعمتی اللتی انعمت علیکم و انی فضلتکم علی العالمین صدق اللہ العظیم So we were talking about Bani Israel, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had favored this special group. Before this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned how he favored the whole human, humankind, all mankind. And then, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said his specific favors on a specific group. And that specific favor on that specific group was uh, the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the people of Bani Israel. And I told you, what is this Bani Israel? Is the children of Israel. And Israel is a name of Yaqub alayhi salam. Ishaq alayhi salam had two sons. One was Is and one was Yaqub. Is and Yaqub. Ain, Ya, Saad, Is and Yaqub. And they were twin brothers. I think I already know that part of the story. Yeah, so even though, uh, you know, uh, uh, children are twin, but someone has to be born before the other, right? So Aiz alayhi salam, he was, Aiz, uh, 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 yeah, he, he was born first. And then later Yaqub alayhi salam came, so it was his nickname. Yaqub means the one who comes in the Aqab, who comes later, right? So that's why it was his nickname, but his real name was Israel. And his children, he had 12 children, and they all formed different tribes and different nations. So <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favor. Now the details of this, uh, these favors are mentioned in this ruku. Ya bani Israel adhkuru, O children of Israel, udhkuru, riyadhkuru, remember. Ni'mati yallati anamtu alaykum, my favor that I bestowed upon you. Wa anni faddaltukum ma'ala al-alameen, and if I gave you preference uh, over the whole universe. Now the question is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them preference. What does it mean? If they are preferred, and that, that means they are even preferred over the Muslims, the one who are the followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had get, given them preference in their own times. One tafsir is that in their own times when they lived many many years ago, like five, six thousand years ago, Allah, they were the best of the nations. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them preference, overall preference, like as a whole nation, they were above all the other nations. Right? And, uh, and if you consider that in today's time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them preference in different matters, not as a whole, but in different skills, they are still better than the rest of the nations. You see these Bani Israel people, they are very talented people. Right? The way they perform businesses is not like we can perform businesses. The way they plan things, they plan things like 50, 60, 100 years before. Something that has to be done 50 years later, they are already planning it right now. The medicine, medicine that has to come 20 years later, they, it's already tested, it's in their labs. Right? So this way, of, these skills, these abilities, Allah subhanahu, in these, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them preference uh, in different uh, articles even today. But in their own times, they had preference over the whole universe. They were the best nation. fear. The day in which no one would be able to, uh, no one would be able to intercede. No one would be able to uh, give jaza for anyone. وَلَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهَا شَفَاعَةً And on that day no intercession would be accepted. وَلَا يُؤْخَذُ مِنْهَا عَدْلًا And عَدْل And the ransom would not be taken on this day. وَلَا هُمْ يُنصَرُونَ And no one will be helped. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the day of the Qiyamah. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا Fear that day. Right? That day. What is that day? That you would not be able to be enough for anyone on that day. That you cannot say, you know, sometimes if somebody gets uh, arrested, you know, if you are a good politician or you are, have good connection, you can make a phone call, right? You can be that I give a jaza, something would, I do would be enough for him, right? And you can, uh, you can rescue him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that day that's not going to happen. وَلَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهَا شَفَاعَةً Your intercession would not be accepted. Somebody today, your intercession, you can intercede for people and then to, uh, to relieve them. وَلَا يُؤْخَذُ مِنْهَا عَدْلٍ And Allah would not take ransom 
for anyone. On that day, there is no ransom. Today, you can pay the ransom money. You can bail somebody out with the money. That day, you will not be able to bail out someone. وَلَا هُمْ يُنصَرُونَ And they will not be helped. There would not be anything that you can do to help them out. That you can all come together as a big one, big army and try to rescue someone and you will be able to rescue from the hands of Allah. That's also not possible. So that day, you have to fear that day. That is the day of Qiyam. وَإِذْ نَجَّيْنَاكُمْ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَسُومُونَكُمْ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ يُذَبِّحُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ وَفِي ذَلِكُمْ بَلَاءٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ عَظِيمٌ Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning all those blessings one by one. You'll see. But they, are not, they might not be in the right order. But these are all the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done on this group of Bani Israel. One of them was that Fir'aun. Fir'aun is the name given to the ruler of Egypt. That's the name given to the king of Egypt. Just like Qasr. Qasr is the name given to the ruler of uh, Italy, Rome. And Kisra is the name given to the ruler of Iran. In the same way, Firaun was the name given, is a title of the one who is the ruler of Egypt. This Firaun, this specific Firaun, his name was Walid ibn Mus'ab. Walid ibn Mus'ab, that was his name. He was not a Muslim. He called himself as a Rabb. Inni Rabb, ana Rabbukum al-A'la, that I am the biggest of the Lord. Right? He wasn't a Muslim. Uh, on the other hand, the Fir'aun in the time of Yusuf السلام, many many years ago, like 400 years before, the Fir'aun of the Yusuf السلام, was a Muslim, right? Because he had taken the Iman, he had taken the Shahada on the hands of Yusuf السلام. So Fir'aun does not necessarily mean uh, that it's not the name of the person who was present in the time of Musa السلام. It is the title given to the, uh, to the president or the ruler of the time. So in the time of Yusuf السلام, he's, a, he's a Muslim. 400 years later in the time of Musa السلام, he is a kafir, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one day he uh, saw a dream or maybe the astrologist, they told him that uh, one of these days, in between one to three years, you're going to have a boy born and this, and this boy would, uh, he's going to become the ruler and he's going to overpower you, right? And uh, you're going to lose your kingdom. So he said, he came up with a plan that all the boys should be killed. Anytime the boys are born in Bani Israel, in this tribe of Bani Israel, because there are two tribes. One is Coptics that belong to the tribe of Firaun. There is Bani Israel that belong to the uh, tribe of uh, uh, the children of Yaqub alayhi salam. Twelve tribes. So he, he's killing people and it comes in the tafasir. 70,000 kids he killed. 12,000 ki uh, kids, the women got abortion. Because they, they feared that our boys are going to be born and he would be killed. We won't be able to see that horrible uh, act. So this is what he did. So Allah, so, so one of the, then what happened is that, you know, all the detailed story that after some time people said that if you kill all the boys, who is going to be our slaves? We will not have slaves anymore. Because if you're killing all the boys, all these men that are present today, they're going to get older. And we will not have anyone to enslave them to do our housework. So what they did is, uh, they made a plan that one day, we'll, uh, one year we'll kill all the boys and other year uh, we'll, we'll spare their lives. So this is how they, they, all, they alternated the years. And the year in which they were going to kill, right? In that year, Musa salam was born. And the year that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have easily born him in the year that he, they were sparing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show his qudrat, right? That, that year that in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they planned to kill the boys, it was the very same year in which Musa alayhi salam was born. And in the year that they were sparing the kids, Harun alayhi salam was born. Harun alayhi salam was older than Musa alayhi salam. So this is what they were doing. Allah is reminding them, وَإِذْ نَجَّيْنَاكُمْ And remember the time when we rescued you, مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ from the people of Firaun. Yasu Munakum Su al Adabi. They inflicted the terrible punishment upon you. How? Yudabihuna Abna Akum. They were slaughtering your sons. Wayastahyuna Nisa Akum. And they were uh, they were sparing the lives of your women. Wafi Dalikum Bala Umirabikum Adim. And in this there was a big trial for you. Wafi Dalikum Bala un Bala means a big trial. Mim Mirabikum Adim from your Rabb, a big trial. 
وَإِذْ فَرَقْنَا بِكُمُ الْبَحْرَ فَأَنْجَيْنَاكُمْ وَأَغْرَقْنَا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ Do you know the whole story or you want me to go over it? You kind of know the story of Musa alayhi salam? So, you know that how there was a long story that when they came in search of Musa alayhi salam and she put them in a box. Those stories are going to come in detail in the other surahs like surah shu'ara. That's when we're going to go in details. But anyways, Musa alayhi salam grew older and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them one night that you can... Uh, you, you can put all your stuff together, you know, you can pack up your stuff inside of your houses and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the announcement that very night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got them busy with something else and Musa alayhi salam, he left the town of Misr in the Egypt uh, they left the town of, uh, no, they left this town uh, of Egypt for uh, it, it's called Bahri Qalzum, this is the river of Qalzum so <coughs> When they went up to the river, the army of Firaun was following them, right? So they have a river in the front and they have the army of Firaun in the back. And uh, now they said, these people said that inna la mudrakun. The people of Musa alayhi salam that we got, uh, we got caught, right? We are trapped now. And Musa alayhi salam said, inna rabbi sayyadeen. That my Rabb is definitely going to guide us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to, uh, to throw his staff and it made uh, 12 paths for 12 different tribes to go past the river. So these were able to pass. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding, reminding them, bahra. Think about it. Then when you're stuck, you think you're going to be dead. Right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps you with such open signs. It's, not, it's very rare. It's never going to happen again. It happened at the time of Musa alayhi salam. And probably it's never going to happen again that, you know, the, the rivers are going to split. So it's a big sign. It's not a small sign. Oh, I was looking for my wallet and, uh, and then eventually I found my, ha, ah, it, it was in my pocket, right? This is a little trouble. Here, there is life is on stake. They are going to be killed. And all of a sudden, something very rare happens. It's never going to happen again. It never probably happened before. So Allah is reminding them, is remi remember the time. When we split for you the river, and we rescued you, وَأَغْرَقْنَا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَا And we drowned the people of Fir'aun وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ And you were watching it. There are two blessings. One is we rescued your life. And the second one is we drowned your enemy. Actually there is th third sign is that وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ And you were looking at it. You see if you have an enemy and somebody tells you that your enemy is drowned or your enemy is defeated that's one thing. And one is you are watching the defeat yourself. What is more pleasing? What is more comforting? You seeing it yourself. You seeing it yourself. This is another blessing. Allah said that not only I drowned your enemy, but you were antum tanturun. I I let you watch it too. That was even be more comforting to you. That you will be more pleased that somebody who did such cruelty upon you, Allah subhanahu wa taala is drowning, uh, drowning that big army, and uh, and you're watching it. Wa idwa adna Musa arba'in layla. Another blessing. And we, so when they uh, crossed this river of Qulzum, then they came into this, uh, uh, this wadi, this valley of Ti, Ta, Ya, Ha, Ti. And the modern name for this wadi of Ti is Sinai, Sinai, this valley of Sinai. This is very important for the Jewish community now. You know that, right? Everything is Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai Hospital, Mount Sinai this. So Sinai is the name of this place. That when they, uh, they crossed this river, they came on the other side. Now, they did not have any constitution. They did not have any ways of worship. They did not have any book of guidance, right? And they were uh, living under the rule of Egypt. And who were used to Firaun, who used to, you know, this, they were idol worshippers and others used to worship Firaun. Some were worshipping Pharaoh and some were worshipping the idols. So this is the idol worshipping community. Uh, so they said, we need a constitution. Who should we worship? What type of life we should live? What type of manners we should have? Stuff like that, right? So they asked Musa alayhi salam to uh, get the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get some kind of a constitution. And Musa alayhi salam said uh, to allow him 30 days that he would go on the Kohe Tur, on the Mount of Tur, and he's going to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had promised him initially that in 30 days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give him the Torah. 
But then after 30 days were complete, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extended that time to 10 more days. So it became 40 days. So Mufassirin said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given the Tawrat in 40 tablets. Tablets mein hota tha, And uh, every day he would receive one tablet. So in 40 days he received 40 tablets and he brought it back. Right? And one tafsir says that after 30 days, Musa alayhi salam was going to receive this Tawrat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he did the miswak. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that this smell that was coming out of your mouth for fasting 30 days was more dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than the fragrance of the musk. And now that you have lost that smell, so fast another 10 days and then I'll speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah would give you the Torah again. So this is how it extended for 10 more days. But the bottom line is that that 30 day journey turned into a 40 day journey. Right, and Prophet Musa was uh, spending this time on the Mount of Tur, and Allah says, "Wa adana Musa arba'ina layla." And remember the time when we promised Musa salam arba'ina layla of the forty nights. Thumma taqasumul ajla min baadihi, and then you uh, took a, to worship a calf after him. Wa antum zalimun, and you were the oppressors. What did you do when the time was extended, ten extra days? There was a man called Samri. He said, you know, Musa, he forgot. I know where the God is. And he collected all the gold, right? All the gold that came from the jewelry of the people of Firaun that they were holding on to, right? After the Firaun was drowned, uh, they were uh, holding on all to the gold and the jewelry they had. And he put them in a furnace. He turned it into a calf. And then he blew into it. He put some uh, soil that had the marks of the footsteps of Jibreel alayhi salam, and then he started making noise and he said, this is God. Musa alayhi salam even forgot. That's why he's delayed. He went to see God somewhere else and this is Allah right here. Right? Now Zubillah min Dalik. And uh, they said they started worshipping him. So, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remember the time we favored you that we promised Musa alayhi salam of 40 nights that he's going to bring a constitution. And in the meanwhile, what you did, you took a calf and you started to worship him. So yeah, these are big, big actions that these Yahud used to do. Thumma ankum, and then Allah says, then we forgave you. Min baadi dalika after this, la allakum tashkurun, so that you can be grateful. Uske baad Allah ne inko maaf bhi kar diya. Wa ida ataina Musa al kitab wa al furqan la allakum tahtadun, and then we gave Musa alayhi salam kitab, the book. Wa al furqana, furqan basically means the one who divides between haq and batil, between right and wrong, between halal and haram. Right? So, تَحْتَدُونَ So that you can be rightly guided. So we gave you the kitab and we gave you the furqan. One group of mufassirin say the kitab and the furqan is the same name. These are the synonyms of the book Taurat. Taurat is a book, so it's called kitab. Taurat is also one that differentiates between the haq and batin and explains what is haram and what is halal. So these are the awsaf. These are the awsaf or the qualities or attributes of the same book. Torah. And some people say, no, Kitab means the book Torah. And Furqan basically means the Mu'jizat. Mu'jizat means the miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam were, was given two main miracles, right? He had like 3,000 some miracles, but out of those 3,000, the major ones were two that he had a staff. He would, he would, if he would drop him in the ground, it would turn into a serpent. And if he would put his hand under his armpit, it would be uh, shining brighter than the sun. So, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَىٰ Another favor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is keep reminding these people of Bani Israel that this is what you did. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَىٰ لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ إِنَّكُمْ ظَلَمْتُمْ وَنْفُسَكُمْ بِاتِّخَاذِكُمْ وَالْعِجْلَ فَتُوبُوا إِلَىٰ بَارِئِكُمْ فَقُتُلُوا وَنْفُسَكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ عِنْدَ بَارِئِكُمْ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Murtadin. What is Murtad? Murtad means the one who has accepted the Islam and after that he turns away from the, from the path of Islam, leaving the religion. This is called Irtidad. Punishment for Irtidad in the time of Musa alayhi salam was death. Right? Irtidad means death. In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, uh, you can get forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. Right? You can, you, this person does not have to be persecuted. If he makes the uh, tawbah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sincere tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive him. The only solution to that is not the killing. Right? But these people who make propaganda against Islam, their own books, their own religions, they talk about the killing of such person who has done the irtidad. There is no forgiveness for such people. 
And that was the rule in the time of Musa alayhi salam too. That if they have done the irtidad, irtidad means they have left the religion. If they have left the Islam, they will be killed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Musa alayhi salam to pass on this command. And he said, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَىٰ لِقَوْمِهِ And remember the time when Musa alayhi salam told to his people, Ya qawmi, O my people, إِنَّكُمْ ظَلَمْتُ مَنْ فُسَكُمْ You have done wrong towards upon yourself. How? بِاتِّخَاذِكُمُ الْعِجْلَىٰ By taking this calf as, a, uh, as your deity. فَتُوبُوا إِلَىٰ بَارِئِكُمْ So turn in repentance towards your creator. فَقُتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ How? فَقُتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Kill each other. ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ This is better for you in the body, in the eyes of your Creator. فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ And then He will accept your uh, repentance. So what happens is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the environment dark. It was very dark. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it all dark so that nobody can see each other. And uh, people started killing each other. There was a group who did not worship the calf. And there was a group who did worship the calf. So people who did not worship the calf, they started killing the people who did not worship the calf. And they were directly related. Some of them were the fathers, some were there, the brothers, sisters. They, they were all co-related, right? So they started killing each other and uh, 70,000 people were killed. To an extent that Musa salam, and Harun salam, they cried to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Yar nahi karo bhai. Constantly you do. <laughs> Allah forgive you. So, so now, what is it? Uh, so they, they killed each other. Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam, they went in seclusion and they made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Allah forgive them. It's a lot of blood has been spilled. A lot of lives have been taken. Please forgive them. And after seven, taking 70,000 lives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them. Innahu huwa tawwabur rahim. And he is the most pardoning and rahim, the most merciful. Allah, is, Allah forgives the most and then he is very merciful. Okay, <clears throat> now, another favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَىٰ لَن نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ حَتَّىٰ نَرَى اللَّهَ جَهْرَةً فَأَخَذَتْكُمُ الصَّاعِقَةٌ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ Another crime these people did. When Musa alayhi salam brought the book of Torah, they said these commands are very hard to follow. This is like next to impossible. How are we going to follow these rules? Can you get us something easier? The, Musa alayhi salam said that all this life, you have lived a life without any rules and regulations, so it looks hard. But once you start following it, once you start acting upon it, it would be just fine. You'll get used to it. And uh, that, this is how our people think too, right? Islam is too hard. And once you start practicing, it's a piece of cake. What is Islam? Islam is not hard. It's just, uh, it's just a little rules, right? It's not so many. So now, this is what they said. And they said, all right, we'll make a group of 70 people. Musa alayhi salam, he took, uh, he selected 70 people, the tri leaders of different tribes. And they wanted to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they wanted to go to the Mount of Tur and speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, requesting them uh, to make these things easier upon them. One more group of Mufassirin say that when Musa alayhi salam brought the Torah, they said that this is not from Allah. How do we know this is from Allah? How do we know this is from Allah? Right, so uh, Musa alayhi salam took them 70 of them on the Mount of Tur, and Allah subhanahu wa taala spoke to them, and they heard it. They heard the uh, the uh, voice of Allah subhanahu wa taala was coming from all directions, because Allah subhanahu wa taala is not unidirectional. When I'm speaking to you, you are getting the sound from one direction. My voice can be heard only one from one direction, but Allah subhanahu wa taala is not unidirectional. Allah subhanahu wa taala is everywhere, so they were getting the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he, they were hearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all directions. They knew this was special. But then they said, we want to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, we want to really see if this is really Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking. Right? But the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then punished them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them all die. They all died. There was a big scream and out of that big, because of that big scream, everybody died. And then Musa alayhi salam said, now how do I answer my people that uh, my people are going to accuse me that you took these 70 people to kill them, that nobody can watch you when you while you're doing this crime. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a second life and they all saw each other getting a second life so that they, you could be grateful and you can be understanding, right? They still did not believe. Still they were like that, right? So... <laughs> وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ And remember the time, Ya Musa, when you said, O oh Musa, لَنْ نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ 
we are not going to have faith in you. We are not going to believe in you. Hatta nara Allah jaharatan until we see Allah subhanahu wa taala with open eyes. For akhadat kumu saiqatu. So there was a saiqa. There was a big. They were. They. Uh, you were struck by a big scream. Wa antum tanzurun and you were watching. They were watching each other die. They were watching each other uh, getting struck by that big sound. Thumma baathna kum and then we revived you. Min baadi mauti kum after your death. So after we caused you the death, we revived you again. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ so, so that you can be more grateful. But Yahud is Yahud. So, so what about the view that says that that refers to them being unconscious because of the thunderbolt? It wasn't actually that they died. No. Liko, uh, liko na. Hatta fa akhadat ko musaiy ka to that this uh, this scream, this thunderbolt, they took you. Took you basically means it caused you to die. Because over here it says that uh, some exegetes, however, are the view that the thunderbolt had not caused their death. It said they had lost uh, their senses, and the word death in verse 56 is metaphorically used for the state of unconsciousness. There is many Mufassirin, but a uh, lot of Mufassirin have mentioned that this means they were ca they were caused to die. They died. They died, and Allah Subhanahu. Wa Otherwise, how would you understand thumma baasna kum imbadi mauti kum? We revived them after their death. So this word that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revived them after their death. La Allah kum that uh, that shows that akhazat kum usaiqatu basically means that they were caused to die. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala took their lives and they were given the second life. وَظَلَّلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْغَمَامَ وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَى كُلُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ وَمَا ظَلَمُونَا وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ Okay, so one of the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did upon them was uh, now they are, they are in this place of Ti. Ti means this place of Sinai, right? Uh, Musa alayhi salam told them that you have to do the jihad towards Amalika. Amalika basically means it's a place, Baitul Muqaddas. Baitul Muqaddas, another name for this Baitul Muqaddas was Amalika. You have to attack Amalika, you have to fight in the path of Allah, you have to make jihad in the path of Allah, and Allah is going to give you the victory. These people said, Musa, you and your Rabb can go fight, and we are, we are over here waiting for you. We're going to wait, we are, don't uh, take us to fight, we are not going to, uh, sacrifice our lives for this, right? If you want to do this, you and your Rabb can go and fight all you want, want, right? You know, that is why in the time of Badr, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa asked his Sahaba, what is your plan or how, or how do you want to proceed? And these people said, uh, the, the Sahaba said, that we are not going to be like the people of Musa alayhi salam who, would, who said that you and your Rabb can go fight and we are waiting for you here. We are, gonna, we are not going to move, right? So we are going to fight for on your right and we are going to fight on your left. We are going to fight on your front and your back. People have to kill us before they get to you. These are, this was the words of Sahaba Ikram radiallahu anhu majma'in in the time of Badr. And Prophet sallallahu became very glad and happy. He was very happy with the response of the Sahaba. So now these people when they said we are not, we are, we are not going anywhere, you and your Rabb can go, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trapped them in this, uh, this valley of Sinai, in the Wadi Ati. Right, and uh, according to Mufassirin, uh, the area is 36 miles by 24 miles. 36 miles by 24 miles. This is how big the area is, and, and it's uh, it's higher up in the altitude. It's in a higher altitude, and uh, they did not have uh, any plantation or trees or anything. So now they are stuck. Anytime they would try to leave the area, they would be brought back to the same place, and they did not. They were not able to leave that area until every single person who was present in that time died. And when their new generations came, that none of them had a person who was the one uh, who, who refused to go with Musa alayhi salam was present. Everybody in that generation died and the next generation was able to uh, come out and they did do the jihad under uh, the prophet of Yusha bin Nun. After Musa alayhi salam, Yusha bin Nun uh, became the prophet alayhi salam. And with, under his guidance, they attacked uh, Amalika and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the victory over Baytul Muqaddas. Now, so now, now they are stuck and they cannot, they cannot build their houses. What are they going to do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, had clouds uh, giving them shadow. 
for, as a cover for them. And Allah says, وَظَلَّلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْغَمَامَ And we shaded you with the clouds. وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَى And we gave you, we sent down to you man and salwa. Man means something sweet to it. They had some ice cream or some uh, pudding, some white color pudding or something sweet to eat. This is what was given to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the food that came from Jannah, from paradise. Was salwa. Salwa basically means... Uh, uh, some kind. This is a, some kind of a bird, like pigeons or uh, what, what do you call? It's a quail. Quail. Yeah. Quail. quail. So, uh, so the, uh, salwa was that a uh, bird? And some of us say that it was given to them cooked, ready, uh, ready to eat. And some people say no, it was. Uh, uh, they were live animals, and anybody could go grab them. They were not gonna run away. They didn't even have to hunt for them. If they were so easily available, they would go catch them and make a food out of it. Eat from the pure things that we have provided for you. And they did not wrong us. They did not oppress us. When they did the, what they did, Allah says they did not do any zulm on us. But they were oppressing themselves. So basically when you do something uh, bad or disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are not doing anything wrong to Allah. You are doing something wrong to yourself. Whatever uh, actions, wrong actions you do, it has a consequence that is directed towards your own self. Right? Either you see in this dunya or you see that in the hereafter. Now, I just told you that under the guidance of Yusha bin Noon, they were able to uh, do the jihad towards Amalika. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the victory over Baytul Muqaddas, which is Jerusalem, right? So, when Allah uh, so back in the days, these cities, they were, uh, they had a boundary line. They had the walls, boundary walls. So, and they used to have doors. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them that as you enter the city of uh, Amalika or the city of Baytul Muqaddas or Jerusalem, uh, Go in prostration. Sajda karna jake. Do sajda, go in prostration and say the word hittatun. This is the dhikr that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them. Hitta basically means to drop our sins, to clear us of our sins. Now we are moving in the Baytul Muqaddas in the sacred valley. So clear us our sins and make enter us, uh, enter us in this town with purity. Right? So instead of following those instructions, Instead of go, making sajda and entering the town, they went into the town with their butts. They were, more, they, were, uh, they were on their butts as they were moving into the city. They were crossing. Sajda karte bhi ja rahe the. They were on their butts as they were entering the city. They were making fun of the hukam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And instead of saying hittatun, okay, well, Allah forgive our sins, they say hintatun. Hintatun means the wheat grains. We are we're looking for wheat grains. Ya Allah, gandum de. Hame, give us the wheat, give us the bread. This is what we want. We don't want forgiveness. Forgiveness is what Right? So, uh, so they, uh, they changed the words. And uh, this is what they Allah says, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا دْخُلُوا هَذِي الْقَرِيَةَ And remember the time when قُلْنَا When we said, اُدْخُلُوا هَذِي الْقَرِيَةَ Enter this town. فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمْ رَغَدَ And eat as much as you can. As you desire. فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمْ From wherever you want, رَغَضَ In abundance. And wherever you please. وَدْخُلُوا الْبَابَ And enter the bab, the gate. سُجَّدَ In prostration. وَقُولُوا حِتَّةٌ And say the word حِتَّةٌ Meaning, we seek forgiveness. نَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ خَطَايَاكُمْ And we shall forgive your uh, mistakes, we say your sins. وَسَنَزِيدُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And then we will grant more to those who do good. Muhsinin means the one who are the good doers. Sanazid will even give them more. فَبَدَّلَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا قَوْلًا غَيْرَ الَّذِي قِيلَ لَهُمْ فَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا رِجْزًا مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ فَبَدَّلَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا So the words were changed by the oppressors. الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا The one who are the oppressors, they changed it. قَوْلًا غَيْرَ الَّذِي The words غَيْرَ الَّذِي قِيلَ لَهُمْ From those that were not told to them. What is? فَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْهُ فَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا رِجْزًا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ So we send the punishment from the heavens upon the oppressors بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ Because of their disobedience, because of their fisk, because of their... Uh, uh, because of them changing the words like this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the punishment. <coughs> وَإِذِ اسْتَسْقَى مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ فَقُلْ نَضْرِبْ بِعَصَاكَ الْحَجَرِ 
فانفجرت من حسنتا عشرتا عينا قد علم كل أناس مشربهم كلوا وشربوا من رزق الله ولا تعثوا في الأرض مفسدين So one thing I forgot to mention that what punishment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down because of their actions uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said they were hit by a plague plague of ta'un plague that it, it's a contagious uh, contagious disease that everybody gets affected and everybody dies because of that so a lot of the people died 70,000 people were died because of that plague that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them as a as a punishment now that they're in the mounts uh, in the place of Sinai Wadi Eti they got man and salwa they got something to eat they got something to have sweets and they got clouds over them right but what about the water as they got thirsty and they had the needs for the water, they came to Musa alayhi salam to, uh, for water. So Musa alayhi salam was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to hit his staff on a stone, right? And then 12 springs came out of it. And each spring was for uh, that specific tribe. And everybody knew their place, their, their uh, spring, and they would go around that spring and get the water from themselves. Why this tasqa? And remember, is this tasqa Musa li qawmihi? When water, Musa alayhi salam was looking for water for his people, فَقُلْ نَضْرِبْ بِي عَصَاكَ الْحَجَرِ We told him to strike the stone with your staff. فَانْفَجَرَتْ مِنْ حُثْنَةَ عَشَرَةَ تَعِينَ Then 12 springs gushed out of there. Every group, every tribe knew their place of drinking. Eat and drink from the provisions of Allah. And do not spread corruption on earth. Do not do any disorder in the, on the earth. وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَىٰ لَن نَصْبِرَ عَلَىٰ طَعَامٍ وَاحِدٍ فَادْعُ لَنَا رَبَّكَ يُخْرِجْ لَنَا مِمَّا تُنْبِتُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْ بَقَلِهَا وَقِثَّائِهَا وَفُومِهَا وَعَدَسِهَا وَبَصَلِهَا Achha bhai. So they are living in this place and they are eating man and salwa and they are getting the water and they are getting the shades from the cloud. They said uh, we, cannot be, we cannot be eating the same type of food every day. Right? We want something different. What do we want? Uh, we want the uh, produce uh, like uh, some uh, vegetables. We like cucumbers. We like wheat, lentils, onions, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them uh, Musa, through Musa alayhi salam that why would you want to exchange something, uh, or something which is not as great from something which you have better? So why do you want to get something lower in quality in return of something better that you already have? Because this is the food of the Jannah. Right? This is the food of the Jannah and it's easily available to you. And now if you want this uh, produce, then you will have to work for it. You have to farm. Yeah, and this is uh, not from Jannah. This is the produce that comes from the earth. And this is the uh, uh, food that you're getting from the heavens. So there is a big difference. But still they wanted it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, alright, then you have to go down to a different town. Because this is, an, uh, uh, this is an a higher altitude. You cannot grow anything. So they had to come down to a different city. And... Uh, and this is where they started farming and they, get, they got all they were desired for. And remember the time when you said, Ya Musa, lan nasbira ala wahidin. Then, oh Musa, we cannot be eating the same type of food every day. Fad'ulana, pray to your Rabb for us. Rabbaka yukhrij lana mimma tumbitul ardu min baqaliha. So that he can give, give us what the earth produces. Mimma tumbitul ardu. Min baqaliha from the vegetables وَقِثَّائِهَا from the cucumbers وَفُومِهَا and the wheat وَعَدَسِهَا lentils وَبَصَلِهَا and uh, uh, onions قَالَ تَسْتَبْدِلُونَ Musa alayhi salam said do you want to change uh, get it exchanged أَلَّذِي هُوَ أَدْنَى بِالَّذِي هُوَ خَيْرِ something which is inferior in return of something which is superior إِهْبِطُوا مِصْرًا then uh, go down to the Misr to a city some Mufassirin say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, go down to Misr basically means go down to Egypt. Or some uh, Mufassirin say, Misr basically means city. Any city that was under that valley of Sinai, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them to go down to that city. If we go down to the city, فَإِنَّ لَكُمْ مَا سَأَلْتُمْ You'll get what you, did, uh, what you ask for. وَضُرِبَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الذِّلَّةُ وَالْمَسْكَنَةُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put humiliation and poverty upon them. 
they were stamped with the humiliation and the poverty. Villat and maskana. Villat basically means that you are humble in the you are lower in the eyes of other people. This is villat. That means you are under uh, you are humiliated in and you are lower in the eyes of other people. And maskanat, maskanat basically means when in your own eyes you are very low. Right? You lose your self-esteem. This is called maskanat. Zillat is when you lose your respect in the eyes of others. Maskanat is when you lose your self-esteem in your own eyes. When you think really low of yourself. So this is what Allah stamped them. وَبُضُرِبَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الذِّلَّةُ وَالْمَسْكَنَةُ وَبَاءُوا بِغَضَبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ And they return uh, deserving the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يَكْفُرُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَيَقْتُلُونَ النَّبِيِّينَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ And this is why? Because they were uh, disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they used to kill the prophets of Allah بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ Without a right. Unlawful. You see, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that they were killing the prophets unlawfully? Killing the prophet, the prophet is unlawful anyways, right? But it basically here it means that even them themselves, they considered this was unlawful for them to kill a prophet. Why? In their books, in their religions, in their uh, custom, they only thought that a person can lawfully be killed if he kills someone else wrongfully. Or if he leaves his religion, or he makes a zina. These were some of the things, crimes for which uh, they would be, uh, a prophet could be killed. A, a person could be killed. So according to their own constitution and in their own religion, they were not allowed to kill and there was very unlawful killing according to their own religions. And this was because of their disobedience and their i'tidad. I'tidad means going over the limit. They were crossing the limits, they were transgressing. That is why this happened. Now the question is, these uh, Yahud have done so much wrong, right? Allah had kept giving them different favors and they kept refusing and doing the wrong. Now this is the time of Yahud that are present in the eyes of in the in, in the in front of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The question is, is Allah going to forgive them now? Or it's always going to be like this because of the wrong that their forefathers have done. Allah says, Don't worry about it. In the Ladina Amanu. Now those people who have Iman, Walladina Hadu, and the people who are Yahud, meaning the Jewish people, Wal Nasara, and the people who are Christians, was Sabi'in. And the people who are Sabians. Sabians means the one who used to worship uh, the stars. Man amana billah. Whoever has iman in Allah. Wal yawmil akhiri. And in the last final day. Wa amila saliha. And they do the righteous deeds. Falahum ajruhum in the rabbihim. For them there is their reward in the rabbihim. In the, uh, with their rabb. Wala khawfun alayhim. And they have nothing to fear about. Wala hum yahzanun. And they have nothing to regret. They would not have no regrets. So even though have you have done such, you have such a horrible past, you have done such wrong in your past. But even today, if you are Yahudi or people of faith or any person, Nasara or Christians or Sabin, any religion you follow. But today, if you have believed in Allah and the final day of judgment and you do the righteous deeds, then your ajr is with Allah. You still get the reward, and Allah would still forgive you. Yahud. Why are the Yahud called Yahud? There are many. Uh, uh, many explanations to that. Some group of Mufassirin say Yahud is called Yahud because when they used to worship, they used to move like this. They were act of, when they when you see that they are worshiping even today, they move because of their uh, haraka. They are called Yahud because one of the uh, one of the meanings of ihad is that. Uh, they are making the harakah, they are making a movement. Nasara are called Nasara. Why? Because uh, Isa alayhi salam, his, when he asked his people, Man ansari ilallah, who is going to be my helpers for, for the sake of Allah, to make, uh, to in the direction of Allah, these, his sahaba, his companions, they say, Nahnu ansarullah. Right? Uh, so, qala al-hawariyuna nahnu ansarullah. That these Hawari, his people said, that we are going to be your helpers because they chose their name. Isa alayhi salam chose their name for themselves. So these people are called Nasara, the one who were helpers of Isa alayhi salam towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Christians, they are called Nasara. Yahud are called 
Yahud because of different reasons. Wasabi'in and Sabians, these are the ones who worship uh, stars. So, if you were, whatever your past is, but today if you, have, if you believe in Allah, you believe in the final day, and you do the righteous actions, then you have the ajr with your Rabb. Wala khawfun alayhim. And upon them there is no khawf, no fear. Fear is some feeling about, is a negative feeling about your future. You fear a loss, something that might ha happen to you in future. Regrets, yahzanun basically means they will not have anything to regret. It has to do with the past. You did something and now you regret it. Such people have nothing to fe fear for the future and they would have no regrets for the past. Now, Musa alayhi salam, he's bringing the Torah back, right? They said, we want to listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused them to die and then gave them a second life, came back. What should they have done? They should have now pretty much followed the Torah, right? Yahud is Yahud for you, man. They're not going to do it. Then Musa alayhi salam, then what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised up the mount of Tur over their heads. It was raised up over their heads. Allah said, follow it or that's it, you're done. Follow it or Allah is going to crush you. This is what happened. That's what they did. They, they knew that, oh, oh, now we have a mountain on our heads. If we don't follow, it's going to crush us. That's when they followed. The question is, how can you force somebody in the religion? One of the famous ayah people bring in Surah Baqarah, it's going to come in the third juz. La ikraha fi deen. There is no compulsion in the deen. Right? There is no compulsion in the deen and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forcing them to follow the deen. No, it is not that, that Allah is forcing them into the deen. This is because they broke their promise. There is no compulsion in the deen basically means you cannot force somebody to become a Muslim. You cannot force anybody to become a Muslim. It's their own free will. It's their own free choice that they are given. They are, you can just, uh, you can give them uh, what you call proofs and dalail, but you cannot force them. But this is uh, not the case that they are not they have not accepted the Islam they have accepted the Islam they have accepted the Prophet they requested the Torah themselves right now this is their dishonesty I would say because of which they were like oh, no, we, we don't want to follow this again right this is their rebellious nature for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them for their rebellious nature that you requested everything and when there is a time to follow it you're not following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said all right why the khazna mithaqakum and remember the time we took a promise with you wa rafa'na fawqakum at-tur and because you did not keep the promise we raised this uh, mount tur upon you khudu ma ataynakum biquwa hold on tight to what we have given to you wa dhkuru ma fihi la'allakum tattaqun and remember what is in it uh, take the advice from whatever is in it la'allakum tattaqun so that you can be pious thumma tawallaytum min ba'di dhalika after this they turn, turn again falawla fadlullahi alaykum wa rahmatuhu lakuntum min al-khasirin and then if it, was, if it was not the rahmat of Allah, it was not the grace of Allah's, upon, of Allah's grace upon you and His kindness and mercy, He would have certainly uh, become the losers. They would have certainly become the losers again. وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمُ الَّذِينَ اَعْتَدَوْ مِنْكُمْ فِي السَّبْتِ فَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ كُونُوا قِرَدَةً خَاسِئِينَ Another thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them that uh, on, the day, on Saturday, this is exclusive for Allah's worship. You cannot do anything else in this day. And these people were fishermen. And they used to catch fish, moss. So what they did, uh, but to test their, their iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought more fish towards the surface on the Saturday. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you cannot work. And uh, this Saturday is only to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they made a plan. To, they tried to trick Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worked around it and uh, they put their nets into the water so that the, when the fish come it gets trapped into the net and the next day after the Saturday they'll come and pull the net out, the net out of the water oh, I yeah so that's what they did and some people say they made a little uh, pond and they would open up make an opening so that whenever the fish comes on a Saturday, on, they will open, uh, make an opening on Saturday. All the fish would come and slip into that little pond. And uh, on Sunday, they'll close the opening and whatever ha the fish has come from Saturday, they'll, uh, they'll pick it up. So because of this, 
Allah says, وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمُ الَّذِينَ عَتَدَوْا And you certainly, are know, you certainly know uh, the people who transgressed فِسَّبْتِ in the matters of Saturday. فَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ And we told them, كُونُوا uh, سْقِرَةً خَاسِئِينَ To become قِرَةً uh, قِرَةً basically means monkeys. خَاسِئِينَ uh, And be, become despised. Become despised monkeys. It comes in the narrations that the younger people, they became monkeys. Older people became pigs and uh, don't think that these are the same monkeys whom, from whom people, they had uh, similarities between humans and monkeys and because of which people got confused that, you know, we are evolved from monkeys. That's not the case. These people did not survive. They, were, uh, they had this punishment and after three days, all of them died. Whoever, whoever were made into monkeys and pigs, they all died. In three days. فَجَعَلْنَاهَا نَكَالًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهَا وَمَا خَلْفَهَا وَمَوْعِذَةً لِلْمُتَّقِينَ فَجَعَلْنَاهَا نَكَالًا We have made it a lesson for those who were present before them and for those who came after them. And there is a lesson for those who fear. وَمَوْعِذَةً Advice for the people who have fear, who have taqwa. Now the, this incidence has a lesson for the people before and the people after. It definitely has a lesson for the people after. But how can it be a lesson for the people before? If something hasn't happened yet, how is it a lesson for me? Right? Yes, sometimes things that haven't happened yet, they are the lesson for you. They have an advice for you. Dajjal is the biggest fitna. Right? Does it, has it come out yet? No. no. But it's a, it's a, uh, there is a lesson for us. Right? There is a Dabbatul Ard that is going to come. This is an animal that's going to speak to people and he's going to mark the foreheads of the people with a kafir or Muslim. Right? So that Dabbatul Ard has not come out yet. But there is a lesson, for, there is an advice for us. So even though for the people who are previous, uh, they lived previously from, these, uh, from this incident, there is a lesson for them and there is a lesson for the people who have to come after. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَنْ تَذْبَحُوا بَقَرَةً قَالُوا وَتَتَّخِذُنَا هُزْوًا قَالَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ يَنَكُونَ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ Okay, from this ayah, it talks about a story of the cow. The reason for which this surah is uh, named Baqara. The story of that Baqara is coming now. And it's a longer story. I think we should do it uh, next time because it's going to take some time. I think we can end our lesson over here. Next time we can start from ayah number 67.